What's up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. In front of me is a three phase bandsaw and around me is my single phase workshop. So today's video is going to be all about how to get your three phase equipment running on single phase power. I'm going to try to keep this video super simple and just help you answer the five questions that I had before I purchased a phase converter. Those five questions are what is single phase versus three phase and why can't I just have it added to my panel? What types of phase converters are there and what is the best for my application? What size phase converter should I buy? Where should I buy my phase converter? And what wire and breaker size should I run to install my phase converter? All right, to start us off, what is three phase versus single phase and why can't I just have the utility company add it to my shop? To put it simply, with three phase electricity, the power is coming in 33% faster than it is with single phase. Although it is still considered single phase, a 220 volt single phase circuit is really ran off of two separate phases or two AC sine waves. So with three phase, you now have three separate hot wires or three separate AC sine waves. So all a phase converter is doing is creating a third line of voltage or a third AC sine wave. So since running three phase power involves running a third wire or a third line of voltage, the cost of running the power to your location is much higher. For this reason, the utility company usually limits the three phase being ran to areas that need that much power, such as industrial parks or large farms. Now, if you want to see where three phases ran, all you have to do is walk outside and look at your nearest power pole. If you see two wires such as this, that is single phase or your two separate lines of voltage. If you see a power pole that looks similar to this, those are your three lines of voltage and there's three phase at that location. So when it comes to running your three phase equipment in a single phase environment, you can either repower your equipment with a single phase motor, or you can use a device that converts your single phase into three phase. The different phase conversion options are a static phase converter, a digital phase converter, or a rotary phase converter, and each one has its time and place. Let's start out with a static phase converter. The main downfall of a static phase converter is it is only creating a third line of voltage for the start of a motor, after which that line of voltage falls off and you are running your equipment on single phase. The pros of a static phase converter are cost, size, and simplicity. The cons are added wear and tear to your motor due to running on single phase power, a 33% loss in motor output, and three phase only for the start of a motor. So since static phase converters do not produce constant three phase power, their applications are limited. Now since static phase converters do not produce constant three phase power, their applications are limited to light duty motor loads. Static phase converters are not ideal for other types of loads such as resistive or inductive, heavier duty loads such as an air compressor, or equipment that is used every day since you put so much more wear and tear on it. Now the second option when it comes to phase conversion is a digital phase converter. Most people will think of a VFD or a variable frequency drive such as this when they think of a digital phase converter. Now you need to be careful because a lot of companies will advertise a digital phase converter, sometimes referred to as a digital phase shifter, but most of them are only creating motor starting three phase current similar to a static phase converter and not constant three phase current. Now with a true VFD such as this, we are creating constant three phase power, but there's a couple of downfalls. The first one is that instead of creating a sine wave like this equipment was designed to run off of, we're now creating a square wave. The other main downfall is that this VFD is required to be mounted onto a motor source, so it won't work for applications such as a welder. VFDs are also not capable of starting high torque motors or induction motors. Now, VFDs can be great because not only can they maintain very balanced voltage, which is great for voltage sensitive equipment, but they also give you the ability to change the speed of your equipment, which is very useful on stuff like lathes, drills, or pumps. So the pros of the VFD are price, ease of install, and speed control. The cons of VFDs are square wave power, limited to one motor load, and limited to lighter duty equipment. Now the world of phase conversion is constantly evolving and there's already a few companies that are offering a true digital phase converter that creates a sine wave and will run any load type. Now with most new technology, the price does go up and you also usually sacrifice reliability because it's unproven. With the complexity of digital phase converters and really with any new technology, the cons of that are the price and reliability. Now, I do think that in coming years, digital phase converters will replace much of what's on the market when it comes to phase conversion, but until then, I'm gonna stick to what's affordable and what's been proven in the past. If there are some major breakthroughs and the digital phase converters become much more available and more affordable, I'll make a follow-up video to go over them more in depth. Now, the last option when it comes to phase conversion is a rotary phase converter. 
A rotary phase converter consists of an idler generator and a control panel. The control panel starts and stops the idler as well as balances the voltage between the three legs. The idler generator is ran off of single phase power but generates a third line of voltage that is then coupled with the two single phase lines to create three phase power. Now the pros of a rotary phase converter are constant and reliable three phase power. Three phase power that will run any type of load such as resistive or inductive and three phase power that can power an entire workshop. The main con of a rotary phase converter is the voltage balancing during startup or load changes on the equipment. Now, custom built idler generator motors like the one in front of me made by Baldor have helped this voltage balancing a lot, but since it's still a generated third leg off of an electric motor, there's gonna be some voltage imbalance when it comes to startup or major load changes on your equipment. Because of that, some very voltage sensitive equipment such as a rotary screw air compressor may require a digital phase converter instead of a rotary. Now that you're more familiar with some of the different types of phase converters and which one will best fit your application, let's move on to question number three. What size phase converter should you buy? Sizing a static or digital phase converter is easy. You'll simply want to match or exceed the horsepower of the equipment that you're trying to run. A five horsepower motor would require a five horsepower or larger static or digital phase converter. When it comes to rotary phase converters, sizing becomes a little bit more complicated. It is a good rule of thumb to size a rotary phase converter with a two to one ratio. So for a five horsepower motor, a 10 horsepower rotary phase converter is recommended. If your motor is sized in something other than horsepower, you can use these calculations to convert them back to horsepower. It's also important to note that if you size a rotary phase converter too big, the power does not go to waste. A rotary phase converter can power multiple pieces of equipment simultaneously, as well as even power a secondary panel that supplies individual three phase circuits across your entire shop. For our fourth question, I want to talk a little bit about where to buy your phase converters, and we'll start off with Rotary. With Rotary phase converters, there's really only two main companies that lead the market, and that's North America Phase Converter Company and American Rotary. While they both create a great product and they both have a great reputation, I did find a couple of benefits from purchasing from North America when compared to American Rotary. To start off, I want to take a closer look at the inside of this control panel from North America Phase Converter. If we take a closer look, we'll see something pretty important. When we take a closer look at the inside of this control panel from North America Phase Converter Company, we'll notice that there's a separate terminal block for the single phase power than there is for the three phase power, and is connected through this electric switch. This switch is important because it ensures that when you turn the phase converter off, there is no single phase power reaching your equipment. With single phase power running to your equipment regardless if the phase converter is on or off, you risk damaging your equipment by running it on the incorrect power or harming yourself or others by electric shock. With a control panel from American Rotary, they save a few dollars in production by combining these two terminal blocks and removing the switch completely. Now, since I only have a control panel from North America in front of me, I will share an email that I have from American Rotary confirming that single phase power will reach your equipment regardless if the phase converter is on or off. Now, the second benefit that I found from North America Phase Converter Company comes into play when we look at their line of phase converters designed to accommodate hard to start motors. Motors such as air compressors, wide belt sanders, or other equipment with large flywheels can have up to a 600% increase in current draw when they're starting. Naturally, both North America and American Rotary came out with a line of phase converters to help accommodate this hard starting application. North America Phase Converter Company advertises on their website that their Smart Boost has a 600% surge in current during startup to help motors like this. I wasn't able to find this information on American Rotary's website, so I reached out via email. In this email, American Rotary says that a 600% spike is what most motors will require, but their ADX line of phase converters will only support one third of that. So 600% from North America and 200% from American Rotary. That's a pretty big difference if you have a hard starting motor. Now, I also wanna make a note that American Rotary does work off commission, and while it's not necessarily a downside, I think you should be conscious of it because during my interactions with American Rotary, I had a pretty strong feeling that I was being upsold, and it was just the third reason why I chose to do business with North America versus American Rotary. When it comes to purchasing a static phase converter, because of the simplicity, there's a lot more companies that offer them. Because of the quality that I found in rotary phase converters from North America, if I had to purchase a static phase converter in the future, I would continue doing business with North America Phase Converter Company. Now, when it comes to purchasing a digital phase converter, the only company on the market that currently offers a true digital phase converter is Phase Technologies with their Phase Perfect line of converters. 
When it comes to VFDs, there are dozens of different companies online that offer them, so customer reviews will be your best friend. Just be careful and make sure that it's a true VFD and it's gonna create constant three-phase power and not a digital phase shifter that only creates motor starting three-phase power. Now, since your equipment was originally designed to run off of three different legs of power and now our breaker is feeding it through two legs of power, we're gonna to need to step up the size of our breaker to accommodate this. To calculate how many amps a three-phase load will pull on the single-phase side, we're going to multiply by 1.732. So a 14-amp three-phase machine will pull 24.24 single-phase amps. Now multiply that by 1.25 so that you prevent nuisance tripping, and the closest breaker size is what you should run. For this 14-amp three-phase machine, that will be a 30-amp single-phase breaker. Now for heavier duty equipment that's gonna have a much higher inrush current, you're gonna to wanna to step your breaker size up by five or 10 amps so that you avoid nuisance tripping. Next, choosing the correct wire size will depend on if we're on the three phase or the single phase side of our phase converter. On our single phase side, we're gonna to have to size our wire a little bit bigger so that it can carry the same amount of current as a three phase side, but with one less leg. This table will help you choose the correct breaker and wire size for your application. Feel free to pause the video and take a photo for reference later on. All right guys, so now you know what three phase power is, the different options you have when you'd like to run three phase equipment on single phase power, how to size your phase converter, where to purchase your phase converter, and how to choose your wiring and breaker size when you install your phase converter. Let's actually go ahead and start installing my 10 horsepower rotary phase converter for that band saw behind me. All right guys, so I have the phase converter installed now, and I just wanna do a quick video on um, how everything is wired and connected. And I just want to start this by saying this whole setup is semi-temporary because I'm working on moving my shop to a new location. Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of show you what part is temporary and what part I would do differently if this is a more um, long-term connection. So down here at the idler generator, um, I would probably clean this up a little bit if it was going to be long-term, but all we have is our four wires for our three-phase side. So three legs of power and one ground. Um, so there's four wires coming out of the motor, four wires coming up here into the control panel. All right, now up here at the control panel, um, we have three main sets of wires coming into it. This one right here is the one we just went over that goes into the idler generator motor. The one right next to it is going straight into our equipment and they both are connected to the same things inside of the control panel. So we have three legs of power, um, all tied into the three legs of power on the three phase side, and then two grounds coming down here into our grounding block. Um, this bigger wire over here is our single phase in, um, and it's bigger obviously because we're carrying the same amount of amperage, but in one less wire. So that one is connected to our single phase block on this side of the control panel and the ground wires connect to the same ground block down below. Um, so if I was going to make this a more long-term connection, another thing I would have changed is I would have made this a hard connection to the panel. So the wires would go straight into the wall and straight over to the panel. But because I use this plug for other equipment around the shop, I opted to um, just put a plug on the end of this now. So once I plug that into the receptacle in the wall, we have single phase coming in. I can fire up the control panel and then we have three phase reach our equipment. So let me throw the cover back on this and then I'll do a quick demo of it starting up and running my equipment. All right, so now the control panel is buttoned back up and we can test out the saw. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug my control panel into the wall. And then with that done, I can hit the on button and our idler generator kicks on um, and it's instant three phase power so I don't have to wait any amount of time kick the machine on, you see it starts raising itself, once it hits the limit switch wherever I set it, it'll stop, and I can start my saw blade, and then I'll start down. So I'm pretty excited to finally have three phase in the shop. Um, like I went over before, this 10 horsepower converter can run a lot more than just this bandsaw. So once I get a final location for it, I'm gonna run separate circuits to other three phase equipment. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed the video. Thanks.